Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So in last week's video, we made this two-part silicone mold. And I kind of took you through the process of how to make the mold. And we used just a plastic cassette tape as the object to make the mold from. And so at the end of that video, we ended up with plaster cassette tapes. And I made a whole bunch of these and kind of just to see how they would look. And so making this mold was kind of a lead up for this project. So I'm going to be making these cassette tapes that have a linoleum print on the front of them. So I have another video on my channel from a long time ago and I'll link to it down below. But basically I did a plaster casting on, I think I used a mezzotint plate. And so in this one I'm going to use a linoleum cut and pour plaster on the inked linoleum and then it'll transfer onto the plaster. And so before I jump into the video, I had a lot of questions on that last video about different types of plaster. And I used just regular plaster of Paris in that video because I tried a couple different kinds of the stronger forms of plaster and didn't have really great results with them taking the ink because I'm using an oil-based ink. But so for this project, I use a product called Densite and it's just a stronger form of plaster of Paris. And I get it from Blick Art Supply, but I'm sure you can find it elsewhere too. And I'll, I'll link down below for that. So let's jump right into the video and get these made. So in the last video when I made the silicone mold, there was this small void that I left in the mold and I used a piece of linoleum to make that. And so now you can see why I made that small pocket. So my carved linoleum block fits right inside that little square and it's really snug and it, it's basically flush with the surface of the cassette tape. And so now when I pour plaster, that will be the, the front of the cassette. And here you can see where the holes for the cassette tape basically line up with the circles on the linoleum plates. So I made three different lino cuts for this project. And so I started off with just a little sketch and then drew my drawing basically off of that sketch onto the blocks. And I just used a really fine point pen and then sprayed it with a coat of spray fixative just to seal it on the block so when I carve it and move my hands around I don't smudge that ink. It really kind of locks onto the block. So I'm using my dockyard micro tools for most of the lino cut work but some of these really tiny areas, I'm just using the small edge of an X-Acto blade and just kind of carving out these pieces. And one thing to remember when you're doing plaster casting with a lino cut is all the cut marks are gonna show up in the plaster. So even the parts that you don't ink, they're gonna show up in the, the actual texture. And you'll see that more when I have this project all finished. And so for this project, I'm using Gamblin Portland Intense Black Ink. And it's an oil-based ink. I haven't tried this with a water-based ink, so I don't know if it'll work. But Portland Intense Black is kind of one of my favorite inks and I pretty much use it most of the time for relief work. So once I ink up the block, it fits right into that small groove in the mold. And I just use an X-Acto blade to kind of force it in there to make sure it's really locked in and all the air is pushed out from below it. And so from here on out, the rest of the steps are pretty similar for casting like I did in the last video. So I'm using a piece of matte board on top and then just using regular tape to secure it down. And this just squeezes the two halves of the silicone mold together. So when I pour the plaster in, it doesn't come out, you know, spraying out of the sides. And so if you're gonna do this, I know that regular just plaster of Paris works fine. It picks up the ink, but it's a little bit fragile. But this product's called Densite. And it's just a stronger form of plaster. And it, it you know, it's still plaster and fragile, but it, it holds up a little bit better. And so I measured out four ounces of the plaster, and then it comes to about a half a cup of water is the kind of the ratio I needed to make this. And you'll have to play with your own plaster, you know, depending on the temperature and humidity to get a good mix for what you need to do. But since I want to do multiples of this, I want to have kind of a formula that I can repeat over and over. Now I'm just mixing up the plaster and the water, trying to break up any lumps and trying not to agitate it a whole lot and get too many air bubbles, but there's going to be some, there's not a whole lot you can really do about it. And you don't have a whole lot of time when you're working with plaster, but you have enough time to, you know, get it pretty smooth. You don't want to have any, you know, chunks of dry plaster come out of there. It's not going to make a good casting. And here it's about the texture of, you know, maybe a thin pancake batter. It kind of coats the glove, but it drips off it too. And now I can go ahead and pour in my plaster. And I'm trying to pour it as slow as I can to avoid air bubbles, but you can see some going in. But the surface, the top part of this mold is going to be hidden, so you're not going to see those small air bubbles. But once I get it filled up and it kind of goes through the vent holes, I just tap it for you know, 20 or 30 seconds and that gets most of the air bubbles out. And even kind of tipping the mold around helps distribute some of those air bubbles and forces them to come out of the top. And you'll just have to experiment with your own mold to kind of find out the best way to cast things without getting a whole lot of air bubbles. Alright, and so I figured out it takes one hour for kind of the optimal time to take this out. The plaster is dry enough to where you know it doesn't come apart, but it's also soft enough that I can break off the little vent holes and I can clean up some of the flashing around the edges, that thin stuff. 
if you do it too early, you know, you might have problems. And if you wait too long, it's gonna be harder to clean up some of the details. And so one hour worked great for me, and now I can peel off the linoleum plate. And you know, the ink's wet and the plaster's wet, so you have to be careful not to really disturb anything. But if you just peel it off very slowly, you get a really nice transfer. And you can see here, the only thing that's missing are the two holes for the cassette tape. You know, they're filled in with plaster, but it's just a paper thin layer that once it's dry, I can just poke it with my finger and it'll make those holes pop through perfectly. All right, now I'm on to the second plate. You know, it's more of the same, just carving out the linoleum, using the dockyard tools for the bigger areas, and then the X-Acto blade for the really small detail work. And if you really keep your tools very sharp when you work with linoleum, it just makes it a lot easier to get, you know, really nice crisp details. So this project, you know, takes about an hour for each casting to dry. And it takes about, you know, five or 10 minutes to get everything ready to, to pour and ink up the plate. So over the course of a couple days, just, you know, once an hour, I'd come in here and do another one. And I probably had a total of, you know, 10 or 12 by the time I was all done. All right, now I can go ahead and pull off the linoleum plate and here's the second one done. And here's the final print coming out of the mold. All right, and so after the plaster cured for an hour, I used an X-Acto blade and cleaned up some of the details and you know poked through the holes where the cassette tape should have holes and just kind of did some general cleanup. All right, so after you know, kind of many months on this project with uh, the many linoleum cuts and the making the mold, you know, it really came out good. I'm really happy with the final product and I got it framed. And I think it's kind of a really cool way to you know use linoleum cut in a different fashion versus just printing it on paper. All right, so I think that about wraps up this project. You know, just like normal printmaking, I made a kind of a small edition of all the different cassette tapes. And, you know, a bunch of them didn't work out, so I made a lot. And then the ones that I framed, I just picked the best of each of the, the versions of linoleum cuts. And, you know, mounted them in here, made a nice kind of frame package. So thank you so much for watching. I think that about wraps it up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the thumbs up if you like this video. And if you share this video around, I'd really appreciate how it helps grow the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support the creation of these videos, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page. Thanks.